In this video, I'll explain how to use trait as function inputs and as function outputs. For this example, I have a trait called animal which has a single function called speak. Let's say that we have a struct called cat and a dog, and both of them will implement the trait animal. For the cat, it will output the string meow, and for the dog, it will output the string wolf. So now let's see how we can create a function that takes in the animal trait as input. There's two distinct ways to pass trait as input and also to return trait as output. The distinction is whether the trait is known at compile time or whether it is only known at runtime. If it is known at compile time, it is called static. And if it is known at runtime, then it is called dynamic. So let's take a look at a static example. The trait that we pass into the function will be known at compile time. We'll call this function greet. It will take in a single input, an animal trait. Animal reference to impul animal. And then inside here, let's call the function speak on the animal. Let's actually call this function inside the main function. Let's create a struct for a cat and a dog. That cat equals cat and that dog equals dog. And then we'll call the function greet. Greet with cat and greet with dog. The input to this function, which is a trait, is static since it is known at compile time. Inside the main function, we can see that we create a cat struct and a dog struct, and then we call the function greet. This is all known at compile time. Let's execute this code. And we get meow for cat and wolf for dog. Next, I'm going to show you how to return a trait from a function. And again, we'll start simple and look at a function that will return a trait that is known at compile time. For example, let's say fn return concrete type, and then it's going to return something that implements an animal, impl animal. And then let's return a dog, since a dog implements the trait animal. And then let's call this function inside the main function. Let animal equals return concrete type. And then let's print this out. Print ln. Say animal. Call the function animal.speak. Execute the code and we get animal.speak is wolf. So these are two examples of taking a trait as input a static trait as input, which is known at compile time, and returning a trait as input, which is also known at compile time. Next, let's take a look at how to pass in trait as input, where the type is not known at compile time, and also how to return a trait as output, where the trait to be returned is not known at compile time. Let's start with taking in a trait as input, and this trait will not be known at compile time. And to show you what I mean by a trait that is not known at compile time, let's first create a type inside the main function, where the type to create will depend on the input. So let's say that we have some kind of input, that animal equals dog.string. And then let's match this string literal to create either the cat struct or the dog struct. Animal. I'll call this animal str. It is equal to match animal str. If it is a dog, then we'll return dog. Otherwise, let's return a cat. To remove there, I'll type reference to dyn animal. And then over here, passing a reference to the struct that we initialized. To tell Rust that this is a dynamic trait, we need to prefix it with the keyword dyn, and then followed by the trait. In this case, the trait that we want to return is an animal. Since we cannot directly return the trait, we will need to return a reference to the trait. So this is why you see an ampersand sign here, here, and here. So now, imagine that this animal str comes from the input and there's no way to know whether this animal is a dog or a cat until the code is executed. In this case, there's no way for the compiler to know whether this animal is a dog that implements the animal trait or the cat that implements the animal trait. This is what I mean when I said that the trait is only known at runtime. The concrete type is only known when the code is executed. So now let's say that we have a dynamic trait. How do we pass this into a function? We cannot do this since this says that the trait is known at compile time. And to show you this, let's try passing this animal trait into this function greet. And let's see what error we get. So pass it into the function greet. Pass in animal. Save the code and you can see that there is an error here. To further see the error, let's try building this. Cargo build. And then we get an error saying here, doesn't have a size known at compile time. The size for values of type, then animal, cannot be known at compilation time. So to pass a trait that is only known at runtime, we cannot pass it into this function. We need to create another function that can take in traits that is known at runtime. So to do this, let's create another function, fn greet, let's call this dyn. Again, it's gonna take in an animal, 
And this time, what we need to pass in here is similar to what we passed in earlier, but here we need to say ampersand sign dyn, and it tells that the trait to be passed is dynamic. It is not known at compile time, and it is only known at runtime. Animal. By the way, the first function is called a static dispatch, and the second function is called a dynamic dispatch. The first one is called a static dispatch because the trait is known at compile time. And the second one is called a dynamic dispatch because the trait is not known until runtime. I'll explain the difference between a static and a dynamic dispatch in another video. For now, let's focus on how to pass in a trait that is known at runtime into a function. And then we can now call the same function, println. To make the distinction, let's say dynamic. And let's change this to static. Again, we call the function animal.speak. Now let's pass in this animal inside our new function, greet dyn. Save the file and the code compiles. Execute the code and we get dynamic wolf. And if you were to change this to a cat, now we expect the output to be a meow, dynamic meow. Okay, so that was an example of how to pass a dynamic trait into a function. Next, let's see how we can return a dynamic trait from a function. Here in this example, we return a concrete type. Let's create a function called randAnimal, fn randAnimal. And for the input, let's pass in a number. Let's say a random number, let's say rand u32. And then it's gonna return a trait. Let's say if rand is less than or equal to 10, then we'll output dog, otherwise we'll return a cat. How do we return a concrete type that implements the animal trait? If rand is less than or equal to 10, we'll return a dog. Otherwise, we'll return a cat. We'll start off by copying this code. Say ampersand sign, dyn, animal. We're trying to return a reference to the animal trait, and this animal trait is dynamic. It is only known at runtime. Now remember from the borrowing rule that we cannot simply return a reference, since in this case, the reference will outlive the function. So what we can do here is something that I have not shown you yet. What we can do here is to store this dynamic trait in what's called a box. Type that we'll be returning is called box dyn animal. Now we need to put the dog and the cat into a box. We do this by saying box new. Same over here, box new. Save the file and the code compiles. So what is this box new doing? What it's doing here is it's storing both the dog and the cat on the heap. Whatever data that you pass inside this box colon colon new will be stored on the heap. The size of the dog and the size of the cat may be different. Since the size is different, we cannot store on the stack. They must be stored on the heap. Hence, we store it on the heap by calling box colon colon new. And we're also returning different types. Both of these type implement the animal trait. Hence, here we type in animal. And finally, since the animal trait is only known at runtime, we prefix this animal trait with dyn. Okay, let's call this function. Let animal equals rand animal. And let's pass in, let's say 11. And then say print ln rand animal. Animal dot speak. And then execute the code. And we get rand animal is a cat with meow. So in this video, I showed you some examples of how to take in a trait as input and how to return a trait as output. And here I showed you a distinction between a trait that is known at compile time and a trait that is not known at compile time, a trait that is only known at runtime. For a trait that is known at compile time, you can prefix it with an impl. For a trait that is not known at compile time, you'll need to prefix it with a dyn.